Black Ops is one of the most famous franchises that Call of Duty has ever produced. This has a lot to do with the characters you meet and the multiplayer being so fun, but the campaigns are the best thing about it, and today we will retell the complete story of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, which was released in 2020. The reason for this is to understand the story better and to appreciate the campaign more, because I feel they are always overlooked. As you can tell, this will be an ongoing series where we look to tackle different Call of Duty franchises, and we've already covered the rebooted Modern Warfare series. Thank you for coming back and joining me on another story so far. Our story begins in the 1980s, right in the middle of a Cold War brewing between the United States and the Soviet Union. President Ronald Reagan has assigned a Black Ops mission to take out a Soviet Union spy known by his alias Perseus. This Soviet spy has been a part of major catastrophes for the United States, including stealing information out of the Manhattan Project in 1943. Then in 1968, Perseus attempted to steal a nuclear bomb during the Vietnam War. Now, 16 years later, in 1981, Perseus is once again plotting an attack on the United States. Perseus, the CIA's analysts consider him to be the single largest threat to the free world. Mr. Hudson, we're all aware of Perseus. We're also aware he's more myth than fact. I mean, personally, I think he's nothing more than the Russian boogeyman. General Haig, allow me to introduce the man who is suited to respond to that. CIA clandestine special officer, Russell Adler. He's one of the few people who even come close to capturing Perseus. Uh, Mr. Adler, why should we take this Perseus threat seriously? You don't have to, sir. <laughs> yeah, then a lot of innocent people are gonna die. Why do you say that? Sir. Every time Perseus has come into play, it shifted the balance of the Cold War. After 13 years of silence, if he's active, something big is gonna happen. Something that will affect the free world. President, this is Jason Hudson and Russell Adler. I know their names. Who do you think approved their last mission? Is the threat real? Yes, sir, we believe it is. Can you stop Perseus? We can, sir. I've already submitted the requisition for my team. Sir, their requests are highly irregular, most likely illegal. If the press gets a hold... What the hell are you talking about? Do you know who we are? Every mission we go on is illegal. Sergeant Woods, plausible deniability is the backbone of our work. Al, we're talking about preventing an attack on the free men and women of the world. Give Mr. Adler whatever he wants. Gentlemen, you've been given an important task, protecting our very way of life from a great evil. There is no higher duty. There is no higher honor. And while few people will know of your struggles, Rest assured, the entire free world will benefit. I know you won't fail us. Jason Hudson is to oversee this Black Ops operation, with Russell Adler, a CIA agent, leading the hunt, as he has come close to capturing Perseus before. Russell puts together an elite task force, including CIA agent Alex Mason and former USMC recon captain. He also brings in Frank Woods, a CIA agent and former USMC master sergeant, and a soldier simply known as Bell. Five weeks after putting his team together, Russell Adler is in West Berlin following a lead on Perseus. Hudson, however, is wary of the task force that Adler chose and is keeping a close eye on Adler, Bell, and the rest of the team. He does not know if he trusts them fully, but for now he will support the task force and their hunt for the Soviet agent Perseus. Do you trust him? <laughs> I'm not the one you should be asking, Black. What about his team? It's a strong group. He chased down Sims, Azalei, even pulled some strings to get Helen Park from MI6. We'll get them Mason and Wood soon. I'm not so sure about Park. She and Adler have that business from before. Of course he wants her there. And the new one. Well, well, don't get me started. That's the one we need to keep our eyes on. 
Bell meets with Adler at a CIA safe house. Inside, we find other members of the task force, including MI6 agent Park and Lawrence Sims, who served with Russell Adler and Bell in Vietnam. They are meeting to revisit a 13-year-old mission in Da Nang to uncover any clues the team may have overlooked back then. They will be doing some sort of memory training exercise on Sergeant Bell. During this, Bell is taken mentally to 1968, where he recalls the events almost perfectly. Adler sends Sim and Bell to secure a valuable asset in a nearby firebase. During their search for this asset, they find two Soviet soldiers. Bell and Sims kill them and retrieve important intel off of them, this being the clue they overlooked years ago. After this, they rendezvous with Adler and head over to Ripcord Firebase. Upon getting there, Sim realizes that the asset they have picked up is a nuke. Four hours later, Bell wakes up from the memory exercise and they begin to scavenge through the intel that they picked up. They uncover some important names that could lead them closer to Perseus. One of the names uncovered during the memory exercise was Anton Volkov, who is now a Russian arms dealer who supplies not only for Perseus, but many of the biggest organized crime bosses around around the world. Volkov heads the Russian mob that moved into East Berlin once the wall went up in 61. This guy has connections to cartels throughout Europe and the Americas. Neutralizing him will not only hurt Perseus, but the global syndicate. He's a big fish. Neutralizing Volkov will have a big impact on organized crime as a whole. Hudson informs Adler and the team that his asset in East Berlin has a way of catching Anton. He is due to pick up a package from Franz Kraus, who is Volkov's chief courier in a bar near Kraus' apartment. Let's take him out. All right. Careful. Now! Nice work. Let's clean this up. Adler and Bell make their way onto a roof near the meeting place to scope out any signs of crowds. After a little while, they get eyes on the courier. Bell heads down and goes inside the bar and plants a listening device while he sits in with Hudson's asset. While they wait, Hudson's asset, named Greta, informs Bell that a spy of hers has been captured by Volkov's people. She would like Bell to either free him or eliminate him. If Bell gets a chance, he will take care of the spy. However, the conversation is interrupted when a man comes in the bar and informs Kraus that the meeting place has been changed because he was followed. Kraus leaves the apartment and Bell makes a quick escape through the bathroom. Bell heads over to meet Lazar and Park, who are inside of a small store in front of Kraus' apartment. They inform Bell that he will infiltrate the apartment and put a tracking device inside of Kraus' briefcase. Bell heads inside and takes care of Kraus' wife. He finds a secret room in Kraus' office and puts a tracker inside of the briefcase and is about to head out when he hears muffled screaming through the closet. A while later, Bell wakes up and he is in a warehouse with Greta. They are both tied up and being questioned by Anton Volkov. Moments later, Volkov decides to kill Bell, but before doing so, Adler and the team come to the rescue. I could probably make use of it, but you are damaged goods. Only a grave can cure a hunchback. Volkov quickly makes a run for it and the team follows him. Bell catches up to him and takes him out. In the briefcase recovered from Volkov, we find out that Perseus used East Berlin to smuggle a nuclear device. The team believes Perseus has stored them in an unpopulated area in Ukraine. Adler has Woods and Mason go over to assist. Bell and Woods make their way to the base in Ukraine. They silently infiltrate it and make their way through the underground levels. All right, that's it. 
They find a control room and a computer that seems to have very valuable information on it. There's a file on there titled Operation Greenlight. Bell and Woods listen to it and hear the voices of Hudson and the director of operations. Here they discover that the nuclear weapon smuggled out of Berlin by Perseus is American. Hudson says that they will take care of it and keep control of the asset. And they will also keep this information a secret from Adler's team. Woods is rightly pissed off. We confirmed it. The nuke smuggled out of Berlin is a green light asset. It's one of ours. If that gets out, no one will know. Not even Adler's team. The stakes are too high. Highest understatement. We're talking about an American nuke hidden beneath Berlin. They make their way out of the base and regroup. From there, they head over to meet with Hudson, as he has some explaining to do. Sometime later, we see Adler, Mason, and Woods headed to meet Hudson. As they arrive, an angry Woods gets out of the car and attacks Hudson. Adler asks everyone to calm down and questions Hudson on what they heard regarding Operation Greenlight. You knew the nuke was from Greenlight! Didn't tell us! What else are you hiding? Maybe I can knock the truth out of you. You might want to rethink that, Woods. Everybody stand down. This little pissing match isn't gonna help us catch Perseus. Why didn't you tell us it was an American nuke? He needed us to clean up his mess. The bastard's been lying to us all along. It's not a lie. It's an omission of fact. That's what you do best, isn't it, Hudson? Manipulate people. Tell them your own version of the truth. There is no truth. Only who you choose to believe. Adler knows all about that. Don't you, Russ? Operation Greenlight. What is it? Tell us everything. Back in 58, the arms race was in full swing. Eisenhower was convinced that the Reds moved on Europe. We couldn't respond quick enough. So he authorized Operation Greenlight, a top secret program that placed nuclear bombs in every major European city. The ultimate countermeasure to a Soviet invasion. 74, the bombs were upgraded to high-yield neutron bombs, capable of terminating personnel without damaging infrastructure. Thousands dying in a flash. You're talking about fucking infrastructure. How's that for civilized? We kill the people, but preserve the buildings. We're trying to preserve our way of life. How long have you known about the missing nuke? One of the green light nukes went offline eight weeks ago. We suspected it was Perseus, but couldn't confirm it. So we saw the photos you brought back from East Berlin. So, there's an American-made nuke in the wild. And once Perseus detonates it, the United States becomes global enemy number one. We wouldn't have this problem if you'd done your job. Killed Perseus in Vietnam. Careful, Hudson. Next time, I might not stop Woods. Now that the team know that Perseus is looking to detonate the nuke and make the United States the enemy, Adler understands they need to move fast. The team search leads them to Yamantau, as MI6 has an insider named Belikov within the KGB that confirms there is an active operation going on there. Yamantau, years earlier, was a base for the Soviet Union where Major General Nikita Dragovich worked on a gas named Nova 6 that would brainwash US agents positioned in different parts of the United States. However, Alex Mason killed the general and prevented the Nova 6 gas from ever being deployed. Perseus is now on the hunt for something inside of Yamantau. Adler is sending Mason back to the Soviet's base alongside Woods to find whatever Perseus is looking for first. Mason and Woods arrive in Mount Yamantau, where they find a mainframe, which they steal and they deliver it to Hudson. He has his team analyze it and four days later they find out that Perseus was looking for the names of the sleeper agents that were used in 1968. Hudson asks for those names, but Perseus has deleted them from the mainframe, and the only place that they can now be found is inside the KGB headquarters, in their bunker at the Lub Yanka building. Hudson heads over to talk to Adler about the mission that's coming. Are you taking him into the KGB with you? Are you crazy? Wait for Mason or Woods to return. I don't need Mason or Woods. I need Bell. He's got the skill we need. Are you enjoying this? You're risking the entire operation unnecessarily. It's not unnecessary. It's calculated. Just understand that if you botch this, we can't get those names. 
It's over. I know you can do this. Hudson doesn't trust anyone he can't control. The Lubyanka building, KGB headquarters in Moscow. The sleeper agent records are stored in the archives 100 feet below ground in a nuclear defense command bunker. Your only way in or out is through this high security elevator. We'll need proper credentials. That's where our asset, Belikov, comes into play. Belikov has been our source inside the KGB for nearly a decade. He'll get us in. He came through for us in Yamantau. He'll do it again. This shit is crazy, even by his standards. You sure he's on board? An immediate nuclear threat warrants every risk at this point. I'm sure he wouldn't disagree. Sims, get Belikov on the line. Belikov receives a phone call from Adler where he tells him they need his help getting inside the KGB building. During the phone call, Belikov is summoned to meet with Secretary Gorbachev, having summoned him to a meeting. Belikov makes his way there to find some of his comrades and two men, one named Zakaev and one named Kravchenko, who are investigating a mole within the KGB. Belikov feels that they are onto him, so he plans to frame a general in the KGB named Charkov. Kravchenko informs Belikov that in a couple of hours they will know from which computer the mole operates. Belikov knows that his computer will be the one that will be discovered, so he quickly makes his way into the server room and redirects the evidence to General Charkov. He prints out the evidence, he takes it to Kravchenko and successfully frames Charkov. Belikov uses this opportunity to steal the General's keycard. He heads over to the boiler room and opens the door for Adler and Bell. They disguise themselves as KGB members and make their way to the bunker. As they make their way through security, they run into trouble, but Belikov helps them. After this, they head to the elevator to go to the bottom floor. Before the elevator door closes, Sakaev goes inside and is suspicious of Adler and Bell. That suspicion gets him knocked out. Hmm. Elevator conversation always gets awkward. Upon arriving on the bottom floor, Adler and Bell begin to take out any KGB soldier standing in their way on their path to the bunker. <laughs> The whole building is on high alert. After a heavy assault, they make it to the bunker and copy the sleeper agent's names onto a disk drive. As they make their way out, they are blocked by KGB soldiers holding Belikov hostage. Somehow, they find out he was the actual mole. Adler and Bell rescue him and they make an escape together. With the name of the sleeper agents in their possession, they discover that a nuclear engineer named Theodore Hastings was part of Operation Greenlight. The team will keep tabs on him as they believe he will lead them to Perseus. Which rings true when Hastings decides to get on a plane and leave the United States for Cuba. The team are alerted to this and head there immediately, as they believe they will find Perseus there. Once they arrive at an abandoned compound, the team must make their way through and find where Hastings is. The team split. Bale, Park, and Lazar find CCTVs that show Perseus entering the room where Hastings is and shoots everyone inside. They head towards that room, but Perseus seems to be gone. A severely injured Hastings lets them know that Perseus has stolen the activation codes for the nukes, all of the nukes. The team must now make a quick exit. They fight their way through the compound and onto the roof where they will be picked up. However, they are receiving heavy fire and an RPG hits them before boarding the chopper. Bell has a harness already on him and he can save either Park or Lazar and in a moment of high stress he chooses Park. Seven, six, five. 
a little while later, we find Bell being dragged inside of the CIA safe house where he is strapped down and seemingly forced into another memory exercise by Bell, Park, and Sims. They believe Bell holds the key to finding out where Perseus has those nukes located. Here we begin an excruciating process where the truth of what's going on is finally revealed. Bell is not CIA. He did not serve with Adler in Vietnam, and he isn't even American. He was a high-ranking member and a trusted protege of Perseus. He was captured by Adler, Mason, and Woods during a mission at an airstrip a couple of months ago, where they retrieved valuable information on Perseus. When the plane leaves trap zone, he's stopping in Duba. This you know. Here's what you don't know. Perseus won't be there. None of these hired guns are going to leave Duba alive. We'll dump the bodies in the forest. Then we will move the weapons to Volkov in Berlin. From there, we fly to Solovetsky. But I have other plans for you. Perseus thinks too highly of me. I don't want the competition. No. <laughs> Bell, you were one of Perseus's agents. His associate, Arash Kardavar, turned on you at the airstrip in Turkey. Left you for dead. The CIA reinvented you, Bell. We needed to give you a new identity to replace the old. Sims and I both wanted you to be CIA. You didn't resist it as much as we thought you might. And we were able to utilize your language and cryptography skills as an added bonus. The bigger challenge was your memory. The CIA's MK Ultra program used Adler's missions in Vietnam as a template. We needed you to have that shared experience, that lifelong bond, to establish trust. Interrogation didn't work with you, but thanks to MK Ultra's research, we had a backup plan. If you believed you were someone else, we could lead you to a place where you'd give everything up. Enough to get us where we are today, but we're not finished yet. We have a job to do. Bell, we've got a job to do. You've got a job to do. got a job to do. The trigger phrase kept you in line, but it didn't get us everything we needed. Your innermost secrets were always locked behind a door. Bell, I realize you probably hate us right now, what we've done to you. I just need you to fully understand the stakes here. What you do right now is not about me, it's not about you, it's about millions of other fucking people. It's about stopping someone who, in the end, has no true allegiance to anyone other than himself. So tell me, where is Perseus? Once we control the Greenlight Arsenal, we will detonate them all from the safety of Solovetsky. During this memory exercise, Bell remembers almost everything. Here he has a choice. Help Adler and the CIA stop the nukes from going off and killing half of Europe, while at the same time truly turning on Perseus by revealing where he is. Or he can lie and pledge his loyalty to Perseus. Bell decides to help Adler and the CIA, willingly, revealing that Perseus is in Solovetsky. The team heads to Solovetsky and they have 12 minutes to stop the nukes from going off. <laughs>
After a heavy fight against Perseus men, they are able to stop the bonds from going off, securing America's way of life and saving millions from dying in Europe. However, Perseus once again flees. After things quiet down, Adler takes a walk with Bell to enjoy the view and talk about the sacrifices that they've made. Arctic air. Clears the head, doesn't it? Bell, you made two extraordinary sacrifices to stop Perseus. One was without your knowledge. The other, you made that decision of your own accord. I just want you to know that this little thing that's happened with you and me, it was always for the greater good. You're a goddamn hero, you know that kid? Heroes have to make sacrifices. That's why when I ask you for one more, I hope you understand. It was never personal. This concludes the story so far of Call of Duty Cold War. This was a great story that had beautiful cinematography. The mission structure was done incredibly well, and I hope that the developers improve on what they already built here and just go bigger and better next time. The color palette on the game and the tone was truly captivating. I especially enjoyed all the missions at night with rain. It made it look incredible, and it made it feel like a truly epic spy movie. Thank you so much for watching another episode of the story so far. Let me know what other games you would like to see covered as we continue to expand the channel. We'll do whatever it takes. Some of us will cross the line to make sure the line's still there in the morning. <laughs>